years after cutting the outer panel along the etched mark now I can start to tack it and I, I may end up trimming a little bit more as I go along but we've got a nice spot to start tacking through here so that's where we'll start so once I have my initial tack done right here I've got a nice tight fit along the panel seam and what I want to do is just continue to tack as I come down here so you can see the panel has some some uh, play where it's moving away they're moving away from each other what I do I actually can work with that to bring my my next tacking point together right up here I will squeeze the panels together down at the bottom just grab this masking tape and kind of lock it right where I want it if it'll cooperate and then I can get ready for my next tack so you can see this this is really nice and, and tight right here. I'll give it a little bit of pressure with my hand while I go to tack it. All right, you ready? Well, balled up on me a little bit there, but I think we recovered. Tungsten looks okay. So we'll just work our way down the line. Now you can see if you get close on that, that's the nice, the, the tighter we have this seam, the better our final finish is gonna be. So we just work our way on down the line like that. I loosen my tape up down here. And now I'm gonna come to my next spot that I wanna weld. And I'm gonna fasten the tape over. And you can see we've got a nice tight spot right here. Notice I start at the center of the, the seam and I'm working my way out both ways. That typically helps me from getting into any trouble. So we'll start with our next one here. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. I, I see when I scrape my filler rod over the seam like this, I'm feeling for the smoothest transition so that I can get the smoothest spot to weld, the tightest spot. Okay. So I'll continue to do this along the whole panel and you can, by doing short tacks, you're not gonna heat the panel up and warp it. And I can just take my tape and move it on down. You may get to the point where you start to melt your tape, but uh, I just grab a new piece and, and carry on. Once I get the whole thing tacked like this in a series, I'll come through and fill a section here, move back up here, move down here, and that's just the way that I've learned to do it so I don't overheat and warp this panel. Then I'll take it, I'll weld the back side of the panel as well, so we have good penetration on both sides. I'll clean up the welds, and then I'll show you how to planish it out through the English wheel. But you can see how nice the, the seam is coming together here. There's a couple of spots, if you look really close, when you rub your finger over it, you can hang your fingernail. And you just wanna take a hammer and dolly and tap those smooth, really lightly, so we don't distort things much, but just get them so they're level, and then we can finish the weld through, and that will give a really nice, smooth finish. All of this prep is what makes the panel nice in the end. All right, so now in the time lapse, 
you can see I did uh, tack welds throughout this seam and then I just strung them together bouncing around all over the panel to keep the heat from getting out of control. When you get too much heat, it starts to warp. A couple ways to control that are, like I said, bouncing your welds around, but also part of the, the benefit of having my seam at this sharp point of my panel or my fender is that it makes it difficult for you to get much warpage in this hard radius right here. If I had a seam up here, which I've done early on when I was learning, it'll warp all over the place. But you get it out in these, these tight radiuses and it's very forgiving. It also allows us to come in with a file and this is a, a very high point so you can hit it with a file real easily and uh, without introducing heat like you would with a grinder, you can file it down and it saves a lot of energy by having it out here. Um, now what I'll do, I'll finish out the tail end up here and the bottom and then I'll flip the panel over and without introducing any more filler, I'll just weld the back side. Well, you can see where there's some uh, penetration is better in places than other, but we have a really nice bead along the top side. What I'm gonna do is just heat the back side without introducing any filler rod, but it's gonna pull that weld through and give a good consistent um, thickness to it and a, a stronger weld. Um, so I'll just inch my way along from the inside, the center of the panel, inch my way along this way, and then let it cool for a second, and then I'll inch my way along back that way. With this, I usually don't do small portions. I'll usually just take a straight shot um, when it's on a sharp radius like this, because the weld on the other side has already stiffened up the panel enough that we're not gonna get a bunch of heat distortion. That's just been my experience. You can still do small sections if you feel more comfortable with it that way. So here we go. All right, so now I'm starting to uh, file this weld down. And I didn't mention this before, but you can see where I filed right here, the nice shine that the, the aluminum has. Um, from my experience, you can kind of tell the grade of aluminum you're dealing with, by the way, the resilience of the shine. This is an 1100 filler rod, so it's very soft. And I'm welding on 60 thousandths, 3003 uh, material out here. I like the 1100 filler rod because it's pliable. Once I uh, file this down, I can put it through my wheel, or if you want to do a planishing hammer, you can do that too. My experience is more with the wheel, um, but it just, it forms out so nice and it doesn't crack, whereas like a 4043, you're probably, you could get cracking. Um, the other thing is when I was welding this on that time lapse video, I didn't have any backing material behind this. This was just a butt weld. When I first started to learn, I would uh, pin a, a piece of aluminum back behind this, a, a thin strip to absorb the heat. So I'll go ahead and just uh, hand filing this down to get it smooth. This is an antique Vixen file. My 11 year old son actually restored the handle because it was broken and made it workable. So it does the job, um, but I just use it to knock down that top portion of the weld. And then I'll come in with uh, either a little pneumatic sander or something light to clean it up before I put it in my wheel. So now I've just uh, done a light sanding over the, the weld to get all the shouldering and the high spots off. Before I put it in my wheel, I wanna to try to get the thickness of the two metals, which obviously they're both 60 thousandths, but where the two metals are brought together um, at the weld, I wanna get that as consistent as possible. Because what'll happen is when you put it through the wheel, 
I found that if I have lumps in here of weld or thick spots, it has to go somewhere. So when you're pushing it through the wheel, you may get small bumps and, and distortions in it. So now I feel that I've got it pretty smooth and pretty consistent and I can work the rest out on the Now I'm just gonna work that weld right through and you'll see it start to smooth out. And we'll work all those little bumps and lumps out as much as we possibly can here. This car gets finished in raw polished aluminum, so I kind of enjoy doing it that way because there are no stories. What you see is what you get. Now we've got the panel uh, welded up with the outer section here. Um, I mentioned earlier, as I wheel the panel, I look really closely to see if there's any hairline cracks because it does get thin. And we had a couple sections that we just came back and added some filler and then I just hand file it smooth. And uh, then I go put it back through the wheel again to make sure that everything is, uh, is holding up and there's no cracking and then um, give it a final wheeling to kind of bring it into the shape that we have here. And this is really getting close now um, to where we want the final shape to be. It's so close that now we're ready to cut our headlight bucket. And a couple of things when you go to cut the headlight bucket in, and different people do this different ways. I, I fix my headlight buckets to the tubular buck I shape my panel and then I will remove the headlight bucket because it's, it's touching inside here uh, almost 360 degrees, it's touching the panel. So it's a really nice close fit already. I'll cut the headlight bucket out of the tube buck and then I'll weld it in to the fender here. The whole thing should be dropped back. So I'm gonna see if it'll let me do that. So I'm gonna work this reverse, stiffen that up, and that should bring this in a little bit. Fingers across too. And I've got the five radius in here. I've found that the sharper radius you use in the reverse, uh, the more it'll, it'll kind of flatten this, the panel, it'll bring the panel to a more, uh, less arc in it this way. 